Knee aspiration or knee arthrocentesis is a procedure to remove fluid from the space around the knee joint using a needle and syringe. Knee aspiration can be done for therapeutic and diagnostic purposes. Therapeutic indications include pain relief, drainage, or injection of medication into the joint. Diagnostic indications include evaluation of septic arthritis, hemarthrosis, unknown joint effusions, and monoarthritis. Before attempting the procedure, one must be familiar with the anatomy of the knee joint and the contraindications to the procedure. The knee joint is made of three bones and its surrounding tissues. The three bones are the distal apophysis of the femur, the proximal head of the tibia, and the patella bone. Lateral and media, medial to the patella are two ligaments called the medial and lateral collateral ligaments. And attached to the inferior aspect of the patella and the tibial tuberosity is the patella ligament. The medial and lateral patella retinacula run in between the collateral ligaments and the patella tendon inferiorly. And just beneath these ligaments is the joint capsule of the knee, which is a thick fibrous sac filled with synovial fluid. The contraindications for this procedure are all relative contraindications. These include bacteremia, adjacent osteomyelitis, coagulopathy, joint prosthesis, and overlying skin infections such as cellulitis or dermatitis. Patient preparation. It is important to always inform the patient of the details to the procedure and to obtain informed consent. Once the patient has agreed, place the patient in a supine position with the knee extended. Anesthesia. If the patient is in severe pain, too anxious or is unable to cooperate, a local anesthetic agent can be administered. For example, using a 25 to 27 gauge needle, one can give a subcutaneous injection of 2 to 5 milliliters of lignocaine 1% to the aspiration site. Remember not to administer deep injections as this can alter synovial fluid analysis. There are three main approaches to knee joint aspiration, parapatella, suprapatella and infrapatella. For the purposes of this video, we will only discuss the parapatella approach as this approach is the most commonly used. Identify the mid-medial border of the patella. The medial patella femoral cleft can be located one finger breadth away from the medial border of the patella. The lateral patella femoral cleft is narrower and the joint capsule is tougher, thus the medial cleft is preferred. Mark the medial patella femoral cleft. This is where the needle will be inserted. Wash the skin and surrounding area with povidine iodine solution using a sterile technique. Stretch the marked area of skin with your non-dominant hand. Evidence shows stretching the pain fibers can reduce discomfort. Direct the needle perpendicular to the long axis of the femur towards the intercondylar notch and aspirate with the 20 mole syringe. There are only a few complications to this procedure. One can introduce a new infection to a potentially sterile knee joint. Improper needle placement can cause damage to surrounding tissues and severe pain. Uh, repeated aspiration or injections of the same joint can cause instability of the joint from osteonecrosis.